In today's video, we'll be checking out the Binbok Ultra Pro. Now, this is a multi-system controller, very much like our little buddy, the 8-Bit Dope Pro 2. Can it beat it? Let's find out. Welcome to Team Pandori. Subscribble. So this here is what arrived. A box from Binbok. This has been sent to us in purpose of video review, no cash has been exchanged, and all thoughts are our own. So this is an Ultra Pro controller for Switch and Windows. It's multi-purpose, for example it's Bluetooth, 2.4G and USB. And it also works with a variety of systems. What a game! Damn right. On the back of the box, we have a nice photograph, and we know it's from Jinjin China. Inside the box we get the controller, in a very thin plastic bag. Like my ex-girlfriend. There's a 2.4GHz USB dongle for systems that don't have Bluetooth. There's some plastic doodles, and they seem to be tops of the joystick, ranging from little nipples to larger hubcaps. An extra one for the D-pad. A 2 meter USB-A to USB-C cable. And the instruction manual. Shows you basic usage, lighting operations, how to use auto fire, and things like that. All of the features are displayed on the Amazon site, and it even supports the new Android operating system. It's currently going for around $57, so this is expected to compete against controllers such as the 8 Bit Doe Ultimate. Key features such as the Hall Effect sticks and triggers are present, as well as a few extras, such as RGB lighting and these things. If you're not a fan of the Amazon Rainforest, you can also purchase it directly from their website. We've put links down below, and a coupon code if they sent us one. On first impressions, this controller is quite nice. The textured hand grips feel almost like rubber, and the white plastic reminds me of Trebo soft mints. Yum yum. Ah. So in the center we've got a switch like minus and plus button, and underneath, screenshot and light setting. In total we have seven colors to choose from, and each of them are pleasing to the eye. And there's also three modes for this. One color, single color gradient, and two color gradients. And if you're someone that doesn't like colours, you can always turn it off. The stick feels quite nice, smooth around the edges, but at the same time allowing us to perform precise movements. And they also click in for an extra input. The D-pad feels pretty good, albeit a bit clicky. And the face buttons use a special kind of mechanical switch. On the top we've got three sets of shoulder buttons, L and R1 are digital, and they're easy to push from most angles. The triggers feel good, but in order to access every shoulder button comfortably, we found that it's designed to be held in an odd way, making it kind of a one-trick pony rather than a controller for all. On the bottom we've got a system selector, allowing us to choose from Switch, Windows and Steam Deck, iOS, and D-Input for the USB dongle. And having this allows us to seamlessly play games without needing to pair our controller up per system. There are more switches on the back for 6-axis, no dead zone, high sensitive trigger, vibrator, macros, auto fire and popcorn machine. And there's a battery that is extremely difficult to remove. Come on. So let's try playing a game with it. Here's the Ultra Pro with the Nintendo Switch, we can easily pair it up. As I don't really know much about this console, I check the most downloaded games list. A Suica game hit number one. Then we tried a 2D game, Sonic Mania. We found there were no real issues regarding latency. And as this controller has the gyro feature, we tried Splatoon 3. Honestly, I don't know what I'm doing as I don't use this function, but at the back of the controller, we have another switch for the gyro. And what this does is bind the gyro and the controller to the right thumbstick, allowing us to use gyro in games that don't even support it. This might help people who can't use the right stick, or if you have arthritis, and to me, it feels like I have more control over the inbuilt gyro function of the game. For example, let's focus on this red sign. And now back to the normal gyro. As you can see, much more clunky. The 
function of the high sensitive trigger doesn't really do much on the switch, as it basically changes the function of the triggers from analog to digital. So let's get rid of this and switch it for something chunky. According to the manual, for the Steam Deck we need this in W or D mode. D mode needs the dongle, so we're going to switch it to W for Bluetooth. It gets detected as an Xbox wireless controller, and out of the box, it works pretty well. The sticks feel sublime when rotating like this, and are extremely accurate, enough to bump down dead zone to minimum in the Steam Deck options. Even when switching over to no dead zone on the back of the controller. And the triggers feel equally as accurate. The USB dongle is pretty self-explanatory. Simply insert it into a USB port, pair it up, and you're good to go. D for dongle, and no problems here. Meow. Regarding latency, we notice no real difference in game to that of the 8-bit Doe Pro 2, either while connecting to the Switch and to the Steam Deck via Bluetooth. We ran both controllers through a simple gamepad tester, and it reported that the Binbot controller had a polling rate of 250Hz, double that of the 8-bit Doe Pro 2. It also stated that the connection was more stable, but as we couldn't open it, we'd need to physically break it if we wanted to get a real latency reading, so I'll take these with a grain of salt. As for the choice between these two, it really depends on the gamer you are. If you like the modern style with the stick at the top, high performance, and the ability to push those buttons at 100 miles an hour, then the Ultra Pro controller is a no-brainer. But if you need something without any of the bells and whistles, the Abido Pro 2 might be the controller for you. It's easier to hold, D mode on the Steam Deck doesn't require a dongle, and the Abido software allows us to customize dead zones and things like that. So this is how I'd hold it usually, and you just can't get to the triggers. So you need to adjust your hands, and yeah. The Pro 2 feels a lot more natural to use, but the plastics on the analog sticks melt away. Maybe that's why we've got these extras here. Just give it a pull. Then we can flip another one in. But the thing is, it's a lot longer. We like that it's got a texture on the outside, but having it so tall, why? Hard like my stick. And double of these? It's just strange. And if you want to go the other way, there's these tiny nubs too. Maybe inspired from the GameCube. We can change the D-pad too. If you check underneath, there's a little piece of plastic showing the orientation. We just simply pop it in. And while we can see the appeal of this, it feels very clicky, unlike the D-pad of a regular controller. It's about time for the pros and the cons. The Beanbox Ultra Pro supports a variety of systems, and it's very easy to switch between them. It performs well, and the Hall Effect sticks and triggers are accurate. It looks pretty nice with the RGB lining, and it houses a large battery for a controller. Unfortunately, we weren't really a fan of how to hold it. It feels like something you need to learn, otherwise all the shoulder buttons are not easily accessible. The added sticks could have been designed better, and we'd like to see the D mode on the selector work on the Steam Deck without the need of the dongle. The Bimbok Ultra Pro. Unique. If you like this video, please slam that like. And as a quick thanks to all of those on our Patreon. Here at Team Pandora, we make video reviews like this, as well as hack and improve things like the A500 Mini and them cheap arcade boards from China. We've got a few more videos on our channel. If you've got some time, please check them out. This has been Amy Chicken from Team Pandora, and I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra. I am John Lu, Massage God.